Hey guys, Bulldog here, and today we're going to be uh, doing an unboxing of this lovely new motherboard that I just got. So this is the X99A uh, X Power Gaming Titanium, because you know it would have been too hard to just call it the Titanium. MSI doesn't have another board with Titanium in its name, and it does have a different X Power, but you could leave that out because then it'd be the you know. So yeah, I, I really don't like the name on this board. This is super unnecessarily long. I think it's dumb. And also the association with the gaming brand gets on my nerves because while this is totally a gaming motherboard, like it can game, it has upgraded audio section and all that garbage crap for gaming, it's also an overclocking motherboard. And I think it would be better if they just called it the Titanium and the Titanium was its, like, its own super brand that was above the gaming and above the OC uh, brands, which it sort of is because there's only two motherboards which go X Power Gaming Titanium. And that's the Z170 X Power Gaming Titanium and the X99 X Power Gaming Titanium. Because, you know, that's just total waste of words. So this from now on is going to be known as the X99 Titanium on my channel. And when I refer to it that way, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not going to say the other two words because they're completely unnecessary garbage. So with that out of the way, let's unbox this. So first of all, this box has a flap. So that you can go and check out the motherboard before opening the box, but that's completely useless. So let's actually get on to the opening of the box. Uh, you're going to need some extra height to see that. Uh, so first, when you want to open a motherboard box like we see here, you're going to grab this tab, pull that out, right? That comes out, then you're going to pull this part up. That's going to get this flap out, that's going to get these out. Then you pull on this box inside here. That's the one with the motherboard, this box. So you pull that box out of the big box, put the big box out of the way, put the board down, open that plastic lid up. Now we get the motherboard out of it. And you're going to get this here. So there we go. And that's the motherboard unboxed. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Oh, I'm just messing with you. You didn't actually think I would end a video after literally unboxing the motherboard, did you? No, we're going to actually take a look at this motherboard because, um, you know, otherwise this video would be even more useless than the normal unboxing videos. So I did not take this thing apart yet. I have no idea uh, about the specifics of the PCB. Though I can assure you there will be a review of this motherboard up on the blog. Uh whenever I get around to doing it. We all know how good I am at getting stuff done. So, this motherboard, it's very unique in its color scheme. It's very silver. Uh, I will be honest with you, that was part of my buying decision. It's silver. So I, I, I went and bought it because it's very silver. And I feel so stupid about doing that, but it's the truth. Um, so, MSI, if you're hearing this, make more motherboards that look interesting and I'll probably buy them. Like, make one that is solid orange, you know, AHOC orange, whole motherboard, I'll buy it instantly. Um, so, yeah, with that out of the way, let's actually have a look at some details of this motherboard. First things first, I don't like this here. I know it's like a cool uh, ROG did it, they have a cover on the I.O. ports and all that. But here, this cover is plastic, so I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, if you have the motherboard in a case, then obviously you're never going to have to touch this. If you're like me and you don't run a case, this is going to get on your nerves, just because you're going to touch it and it feels cheap and terrible. So, yeah. However, MSI was not insane, and so they decided that it would be very reasonable to give us screws so that those of us with screwdrivers and the skills required to operate such very demanding tools can actually pull off the uh, plastic cover for the I.O. shield. So it's just these screws. And these are all normal sized screws as well. So it's like they really don't care about you pulling that off. I'm really happy with them about doing that because this makes, yeah, it's super easy to pull that I.O. shield off. So that, that's a good thing. Now, uh, other than that, we also have normal screws for everything else. Uh, so let's flip the board again, and I, I'll, I, I'll go complaining some more. Uh, so next up, um, th this is plastic as well. I don't really have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with, though, is this right here. This little L thing does absolutely freaking nothing. It is completely freaking 
useless, okay? So under it, we have two phases for VRAM. There's a two-phase VRM for this bank of memory. Um, and this is not a heatsink for that. It doesn't have any kind of thermal contact to the VRM buried down under it. Uh, if I want to insulate this motherboard, this just gets in the way. Literally a waste of space and material. It is not, it's too, like, it's also so far away. The chipset's going to be somewhere around here, right? Chipset's, like, probably right under this. The heat's not going to go that far. This has no functional purpose. I'll be honest with y'all. I like spoilers on cars, only when the spoilers are actually useful. And, you know, then you can have a spoiler as big as you like. If you actually need that spoiler, it's great. If you don't need the spoiler, don't put it there. It's just a extra weight and it makes it slower. And this heat sink right here does, it's basically a, a spoiler on a car that doesn't need a spoiler. Because this heat sink doesn't cool anything, so why is it there? And it gets in the way if you want to insulate, because you need to, you know, tear that off. If they didn't put this here, this would be really, really easy to insulate this motherboard because you'd pull off that heat sink and obviously the assembly because that has a heat pipe, right? So this has a heat pipe that dumps into this heat, this fin stack here, which is actually nice. I really like that this is a proper fin stack, not like on the Rampage where it's just a giant block of metal because this has more surface area. Hopefully it'll cool better. Um, so I'm expecting some pretty good VRM thermals from this. But so, you know, you just remove that and you can insulate the entire CPU socket area. But this, like, why? If this wasn't here, right, you you just have one heatsink to take off. With this in the way, you have to take two heatsinks off, which really isn't that that big a deal. But yeah, I, I don't like it. Just just gonna put that out there, um, which I think you got after my several minutes po potentially. I'm not sure how long that rant went on for, but yeah, you get it. I don't like that. Um, other than that, what I do like is we have metal protectors on everything. So how these work is they're basically, I think it's just a piece of aluminum. I'm not really sure what metal it is. Either way, these things are soldered directly into the motherboard. If you can manage to rip out the PCIe slot, and by rip out, you, you know what I mean. The people who put their graphics card in, they forget, and then they want to pull the graphics card out, forget to, you know, flip the tab. And then they just keep pulling on it until they eventually pull out the plastic PCIe slot. Good luck doing that with one of these on there, because this is soldered straight into the motherboard. You're probably going to break the motherboard in the process, and hopefully uh, it will put up enough resistance for you that you actually notice that you're being stupid before you actually end up ruining your motherboard. So I do appreciate these. These are nice, because uh, I sometimes also forget to reach for the tabs or the tab. Like, I reach for the tab, you know, I unlock it, and then I angle the card trying to get it out, and it relocks. So I, I do appreciate this. This is nice. That's a nice feature. It also doesn't really do anything for my insulation methods because it doesn't really get in the way. So yeah, I do appreciate those metal protectors. Those are nice. Uh, they're also on the RAM slots. I think there they don't really make sense. I've never heard of anybody ripping out a RAM stick with the uh, RAM slot on it still, but hey, nice touch. It's there. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't harm anybody. It's cool. Uh, it, it still has, you know, it does reinforce the RAM slot a bit and it doesn't really do anything negative for the motherboard. Now, what I do like about the RAM slots, on the other hand, is these are single, single lever. So this end, these are spring-loaded. So if you want to put a stick of RAM in here, you only have to deal with these clips of RAM on this end of the board. So I'll actually try to get you a close-up of that. But I had to disable automatic zoom because at long distances like here, it doesn't work. So yeah, these are those, you know, you just slide the stick in. And then you have to only deal with that. So that's very nice. That's very nice in my opinion. That, that makes swapping out RAM much, much more convenient. So I do appreciate that from MSI. Um, yeah. And so that sort of covers, I think, most of the stuff. Wait, no. Uh, the board does come with an M.2 slot. MSI chose to put the M.2 down here because obviously if it was under your first slot, then if you put your graphics card in, then your graphics card, most graphics card will just cook your M.2 drive. Um, so yeah, I don't really care about M.2 drives because I think they're overpriced and completely useless. Um, so I'm not ever going to use the M.2 slot, but it is far away. 
And actually, this is also kind of convenient for when you're doing insulation because it's all the way over here. If you're only doing CPU on LN2, you don't actually have to deal with this because this thing is a pain to insulate around because, yeah, so that's nice. Um, so you'll only really need to insulate it if you're doing two-way or if you're doing two-way, three-way, or four-way uh, LN2. If you're doing one GPU on LN2 and CPU on LN2, you can basically ignore this section of the motherboard down here. Uh, not that I'm going to do that because, again, I don't care about this working, so I'm just going to go right over that with a paintbrush and some Plasti Dip to make sure that everything is as waterproof as I can make it. So, that covers, uh, I think, most of the front of the motherboard. I think you can obviously see how these PCIe slots work. So 16, 8, 8, 16, 8. Uh, it's really that simple. You do get a Molex connector to shove some extra 12 volts power into them. Uh, that's because if you have four GPUs, three GPUs, and you run them at really high load, uh, you can sometimes, well, overclock them heavily and run them at high load, you can sometimes burn out the 12 uh, 12-volt pins on your 24-pin connector. And that obviously sucks, because that'll ruin your motherboard. So, yeah, I'm very happy with all of that. Um, so... That, that's nice and cool. Uh, we have some buttons here. I have not yet figured out what those do. I have yet to read the motherboard manual. We have a BIOS switch right here. So that's nice. The motherboard has dual BIOS. The BIOSes do not seem to be replaceable because I cannot see them. So they aren't replaceable. Uh, then we have another switch over here that I have no idea what it does. Um, then we have a bunch of I.O. So we have USB and all that. We also get two four-pin fan headers down here. So mustn't skip over those. So there's two four pins. There's also a trusted platform or JTPM. Yeah, JTPM1. So that's some alter, some smaller version of trusted platform uh, modules. So yeah, so then you get your SATA Express, uh, more SATA Express. I'm not sure about the details of it. SATA Express. I never cared about it. I just use SATA for everything. So. You get your six SATA ports. I'm only going to use two, so, yep. Uh, there's USB 3 uh, ports right here. They're right-angled. I really appreciate this because those USB 3 cables, right, they're, when you have them going upwards, they make a horrible mess. So this is really nice. This, is, this looks good. Uh, the 24 pin is not angled, but that's fine because um, if you angle it, it, it doesn't actually fit in some cases properly. So... And this is already a really wide motherboard. I don't know if you've noticed, but this is EATX. So it's slightly larger. Like, it's slightly larger than a normal ATX board. So, yeah. Um, now, so then you get your 24-pin. By your 24-pin, you get these. Those are little LEDs. Uh, debug LEDs, I think. I'm not sure exactly how they work, but I'm pretty sure they're going to light up if there's any issues with booting up. Uh, the motherboard. Uh, then we get this right here, which actually I'll pull this board up again. So this right here, and that's just so you can put voltage probes into the motherboard there. Yeah, so that's for voltage probes, and that's, that's super useful because this is an overclocking motherboard. And let's go over the rest of the OC feature set, and I need to get this. There we go. That's how I get it into frame. So then we get power, uh, reset, and uh, increase and decrease BCLK. Uh, so that's the same loadout as my M power has. I'm, I'm already happy with what my M power has. I would appreciate more buttons, maybe a ratio change button, but you know it's fine that it's not there. Uh, you also get slow mode, and you do get B clock. Uh, there's a base clock selector switch as well. I am not sure how exactly that is supposed to work. I still have to read the you know, the manual, as I said before. Uh, this big knobby thing, so this is a knob, you can turn it, um, and you can press it as well. I do believe that's their new implementation of OC Genie. So that's the automatic overclocking garbage from MSI. And you know exactly what I think about it because I just called it garbage. Uh, below that, we get a dip switch that you can use to uh, turn on and off uh, GPUs. So if you're running four-way SLI or four-way Crossfire and they're water-cooled or LN2 cooled and it's going to be really hard to pull the graphics card out of the system, you can just disable it with one of those switches 
It's going to turn off the graphics card. You don't have to worry about pulling it out. It's not going to fire up any longer. Um, so that, that's, that's nice and convenient. Um, then we get this button over here. I have no idea what this one with the lightning bolt does. Again, I'll find out after I read the, the manual. You also get a USB type C port right there, which I'm just like, that boggles the mind. I have no idea why that's there, what that's for, but it's there. So yeah, just going to make you aware of it. Uh, then we get three four pin fan headers right here next to the RAM slot and one more above the postcode LED, which you can use for debugging all kinds of issues when trying to power up the motherboard. So yeah, this is all well and good. That's all nice. Here, actually, let's take a look at the VRM since we're going to be in that area. So that's a 12 phase. There's 12 phases worth of components. On the back, we have four chips. So like that, those four guys, wait. No, wait, not four, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are of either doublers or really high power drivers. I hope they're doublers. I really, really hope for MSI's sake that those are just doublers because I will complain if they go and drive a 12 phase VRM through six drivers because essentially that converts your 12 phase into a six phase and it's dumb. It's a waste of freaking resources. So. And it's just a marketing stunt. It's a worse marketing stunt than using doublers, in my opinion. It's the, it's the worst VRM marketing stunt. And MSI do, did, like, that. my M-Power has 20 phases. What it actually has is five doublers that then, so you get 10 phases, and then they run it into 20 phases worth of components. What a load of crap. I mean, it does lower the thermals massively. The M-Power VRM is like, you can run it at full load and just can put your hand all over it, and it won't even burn you or anything. It just feels kind of warm. So it runs really, really cool, but what a waste of freaking motherboard space, isn't it? Um, so, and, 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 you know, VRM components aren't dirt cheap. Uh, 20 phases worth of components is a waste of money. So, uh, yeah, um, I really hope those are doublers. I'll check that later. Um, so yeah, so that sort of covers the VRM, and the VRM gets all of its power from an 8-pin and a 4-pin. Uh, so, yeah, that's nice. Uh, that goes then into a filter, and then there's some uh, nice big 16-volt capacitors there to, uh, you know, bank power for the uh, VRM. And actually, on the output side of the VRM, which is kind of cool, these are all tantalums, so that's nice, because those are really easy to insulate over, and they're not very tall, so the VRM should... Assuming that it's actually running doublers and I do get frequency control, uh, you know, VRM switching frequency control in the BIOS, you could run this VRM really, really clean, though it's not really necessary because Haswell E and Broadwell E both have the fully integrated voltage regulator from Intel, so the VRM doesn't matter on them too much as long as it can deliver plenty of power. And this is its 12 phase. It's pretty hot. Well, it's not hard, but you'd have to be pretty you'd have to be pretty awful to design a weak 12 phase. Um, like, really awful components uh, to design a weak 12 phase. So I'm, I'm hoping, like, if this uses 40 amp phases, which isn't really that hard to do, th this will do 480 amps, which is plenty. Uh, but, it, you know, let's, let's hope. We'll know for sure when I do my review and actually tear down the motherboard fully and take all of the photos and everything I need. Um, so yeah, that covers that. And actually, the two RAM sections uh, have some extra capacitors here and here as well. And those are also easy to insulate over because they're, again, uh, tantalums and they're flat packs, not cylinders, because getting under the cylinders is a little bit hard. Um, so yeah, uh, the v, uh, memory VRMs are, there's one here and the other one's over here. Uh, they're both two phases. This one's not cooled. This one's also not cooled by anything. So th those are just run passively. That doesn't matter. V DDR4 runs on basically air and ambient energy of the world. So um, yeah, I don't really mind that those VRMs aren't really treated that well. Um, and actually you can see a continuation of the memory VRMs. So we have two MOSFETs here for the memory and two more MOSFETs here 
for the other memory VRM. So I bet those MOSFETs only exist to add better uh, memory VRM efficiency because I don't really see why you would need that many MOSFETs for DDR4. It's really low power. Um, so yeah, that about covers everything I can think. Wait, we didn't do the I.O. So the I.O. Um, it's red and it's black and it, it like I don't I don't care I really couldn't so you have VS slash 2 you have two USB 2 ports under that I'm very happy that we have two USB 2 ports I need my USB 2 for XP for Windows 7 for you know everything because I I don't like the new OS's so I always stick to USB 2.0 because if you don't have enough USB 2.0 you're gonna have a problem installing Windows 7 because it needs USB 3.0 drivers to work so, you know, 2.0, we have three 2.0 ports, so I never have to worry about co compatibility when trying to install Windows. That's nice. I appreciate that. Uh, then we have a stack of 3.0, another stack of 3.0, a Ethernet connector, Type-C 3.1, another 3.1 in the normal USB connector. I don't know the technical term for it. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, so this motherboard does have an integrated Wi-Fi card, so that's this right here. And then we get 7.1 channel audio as well. So, I think that covers everything about this month. Wait, no. No, it doesn't. Uh, the X99A series from MSI comes with a tweaked uh, 2111 socket. So, Asus came out with the OC socket for X99. Uh, after some time, everybody figured out what exactly it is that Asus does on their motherboards, and now everybody has OC sockets. This is one of those motherboards with an OC socket. The OC socket is absolutely necessary to get good cache, uh, good cache overclocking on uh, Haswell E CPUs. It's not necessary. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary for Broadwell E, but for Haswell E, it is absolutely necessary if you want to run your cache above 3.7 gigahertz, which you do if you care about benchmarks. So, yeah. Uh, very, very nice board. I very much like it. It is cheaper than the Rampage 5 Extreme, which is nice as well. Uh, the feature set is great. You know, uh, I, I personally can't wait to try this board out. And after I decide that it's stable on air cooling, it's probably going to become my go-to LN2 motherboard for X99. And hopefully I can put down some really nice scores on my two remaining Fury X's, as well as the RX 480 and any other RX 480's I might get in the future, because there are plans for more RX 480's. So this, this is going to be my new GPU benchmarking uh, motherboard, and it is, I, I really hope it does well, because I love GPU benchmarks, and it sucks when you can't run them on a powerful X99 system. So. Yeah, let's hope that this motherboard does well. Also partially for its own sake, because if it doesn't do well, I'm going to slam this thing every chance I get. Okay, that's that for this video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, as you should always. Um, leave a comment about anything you would like to know or complain about or whatever down in the comment section below the video. Um, yeah. Uh, there's going to be more content coming out soon. I think I'm going to do an installation video. The review for this motherboard will come out soon. And see you next time.